Okay, this is uh, part five. We are on slide 45 in the book. We're on page 510. Uh, in this section, we're going to look at drugs that inhibit metabolic pathways, drugs that inhibit cell membrane integrity, and we'll look at uh, the difficulties of treating tuberculosis. So, on slide 46, metabolic pathways. So, metabolic pathways start with some precursor and then a series of enzymes can take that precursor and they change it and change it and change it until we have some kind of useful product. Our enzymes, our pathways may be branched or they may be cyclical. <clears throat> and in this case, we're going to look at two drugs, uh, sulfonamides, also known as sulfur drugs, and trimethoprim, and their ability to uh, interfere with the biochemical pathway that produces folate or folic acid. So you may be very, you may be familiar. Uh, folic acid, one of those things that is a particular concern when you are pregnant. You need to keep your folic acid uh, intake up. The reason for that is that uh, folate or folic acid is an important, um, a very important chemical in uh, nucleotide synthesis. So. DNA nucleotides, RNA nucleotides, when a cell wants to replicate and when, when, when a cell wants to divide, uh, it's going to need to duplicate all of its DNA. And you'll see uh, on page 510 on the book there, you start with a precursor and it works its way through these biochemical pathways. And at the other end, you make things like thymine and guanine and adenine uh, nucleotides. So, <coughs> turns out that um, folic acid production is a good target because animals, we lack the enzymes that allow us to make folic acid. We have to eat uh, folic acid from the environment we can't take precursors and build it ourselves. So sulfur drugs and trimethoprim are, are good drugs because sulfur drugs, there's no target in a, a, a human cell that will interact with the sulfur drugs. <clears throat> so you can see here, precursor one, uh, this thing called PABA, P-A-B-A. And our sulfur drugs are um, competitive inhibitors. So you can see there the, uh, the PABA and the uh, sulfan. These names uh, do not uh, trip off the tongue. Sulfan ilamide the actual name of the drug itself, you can see their shape is very similar. They all have uh, this kind of hexagon in the middle. This is the shape of the molecule that the enzyme, that the bacteria's enzyme in this biochemical pathway wants to work with. And you'll see that our sulfur drug has a very similar shape and that allows it, here is the enzyme, it is, has the active site is one step of our 
um, our pathway governed by this enzyme. This enzyme wants to stick to its substrate and produce some product. Our sulfur drug shape is good enough to stick into the enzyme's active site. Turn the enzyme off and it, can, it therefore can't uh, complete that step of the biochemical pathway. <coughs> Plasmids can uh, bring along with them uh, resistance to these drugs. To what plasmids are in a second. You'll see that trimethoprim affects a step in the biochemical pathway a little bit lower down. And we can use trimethoprim and sulfonamides together in a synergistic way. We can block two parts of the same biochemical pathway with our two drugs. So if any, we can use our sulfur drug to block that first pathway. Unless we use an extremely high amount of sulfur drugs, there's going to be some enzymes who are making or who are working on that pathway still. And then we can intercept any of the kind of those uh, stray um, products and use our trimethoprim to again interfere with an enzyme at a later step. So, savinamides and trimethoprim, they work together to disrupt this biochemical pathway. As a result, the bacteria can't um, produce nucleotides, and uh, that is um, bad then for the, the bacteria. Okay, slide 48. Antimicrobial medications that interfere with cell membrane integrity. An example here is uh, daptomycin. You can see in the, the diagram there what it does. Here's our membrane. The uh, cytoplasmic membrane of bacteria and the membranes around our own cells are made up of pretty much the same stuff. Uh, lipid bilayer with its uh, hydrophobic tails and its hydrophilic heads. Our daptomycin inserts itself in the membranes puts a hole in the membrane and stuff that uh, should be inside the cell then leaks out of the cell. However, daptomycin often when it has a low therapeutic value. Uh, this means that it is often limited to topical applications. And the reason being is that the membranes that it's interfering with. If it's going to interfere with the membrane of a bacterial cell, then it's going to interfere with the membrane of a eukaryote cell because these lipid bilayer membranes are very, very similar between you and a bacteria. So one kind of overarching uh, idea behind finding drugs is finding drugs that are attacking stuff in bacteria that we don't have or attacking stuff in bacteria that's different enough the closer the targets are together between the bacteria and the human the the, the lower this uh, therapeutic index is going to be a membrane is a membrane whether it's around the cytoplasmic membrane of bacteria or if it's around your cells. <coughs> now the uh, outer membranes of gram-negatives 
are a little bit different to uh, regular uh, lipid bilayers. And in fact, uh, daptomycin doesn't have the ability to affect outer membranes. And another example of why gram negatives are a little bit more resistant, because the daptomycin has to get to the cytoplasmic membrane, the inner membrane. And with a gram negative, it has the outer membrane to get past. It has to get past the outer membrane, and then it can make its way to the cytoplasmic membrane. In a gram positive, there is no additional barrier. It can just make its way to the membrane. So just a couple more slides left to look at. Slide 49, uh, antimicrobial medications that affect mycobacterium. So why are so mycobacterium uh, tuberculosis, for example, the uh, bacteria that produces or causes tuberculosis, why is it a problem? Structurally speaking, uh, mycobacterium are gram positives. They do have peptidoglycan, but in addition to peptidoglycan, they have other stuff in their cell walls. Particularly, they have this uh, waxy chemical called mycolic acid. You can see here, I've got a picture of the uh, mycobacterium wall on slide 49. So that very outermost layer of mycotic acid is very resistant to chemicals. It prevents the entry of many chemicals. The other thing that is uh, working against us when treating mycobacterium is the very slow growth rate. So let's talk about our analogy again of our, of our brick layer, building a brick wall. Hopefully you can see that the faster he is building that wall, every time you interrupt him when he's putting a brick down is a, an ability to have him build a weaker wall. But if he's putting a brick down once per day, for example, that means you have to be around for a very, very long time and interfere with him at exactly the point he's putting that brick down. So it's much harder to uh, hang around for six months while someone's building a wall and be there every time they're putting a brick down compared to being there for a few short hours and interfering with that uh, bricklaying process throughout uh, that time. So the slow growth rate of mycobacterium is a problem because uh, our uh, beta-lactam drugs can only interfere with the wall building process. <clears throat> we do have drugs that work against mycobacterium. Uh, mycobacterium. Typically we, uh, we class them in tiers uh, there are, or, or lines. There are first line drugs and second line drugs. Uh, isoniazid um, is a drug that uh, affects mycobacteria. Isoniazid is a drug that interferes with the production of that mycolic acid directly. Uh, other drugs um, interfere with the synthesis of other cell wall components. Uh, Second line antibiotics used for resistant strains. So you have someone with uh, tuberculosis, you treat them with the, the first line. If those don't work, you move to the second line. If those don't work, you move down the line. And as you move down the line, you are using uh, drugs that are typically gonna be more toxic, but drugs that are typically held back so that the chances of the mycobacterium being resistant are lower. Betaquilin 
talked about in the uh, bottom here of slide 50. Uh, Betaquidin has uh, had many studies. It targets mycobacterial ATP synthase. Uh, it's a risky drug. Some of the um, studies had more people dying after receiving the drug than they did in the placebo. That kind of sounds like uh, not a good drug then, but if you have active tuberculosis, um, your chances are pretty low to begin with, and therefore I'm not quite, I haven't seen the data on, on how um, people with actual tuberculosis are affected by this drug. It's also currently very expensive. So mycobacterium tuberculosis is a particularly tricky one because of its very unusual structure and its uh, slow growth. Because of its very slow growth, it uh, drugs for uh, tuberculosis are often very, very long or have been taken for a very long period of time, uh, months at a time. And that means a person has to take their medication uh, on a very long uh, basis. And often that means that they just stop taking it talk about some ideas of how do you get someone to take medications regularly uh, if they have to take it for uh, say six months. So on to slide 51, that's our study guide. Be able to recognize uh, these drugs, sulfonamides, these are the ones that interfere with the uh, folic acid or folate synthesis pathways early on. They uh, are competitive because they share the same shape as that uh, PABA uh, molecule. And they therefore the drug can stick into the enzyme at its active site instead of the, the PABA molecule. Trimethoprim also interferes with that folate production pathway, but interferes later on. And they are synergistic, because as I said, our different pathways we use our sulfur drugs, we are turning off this pathway, but probably not entirely. We are probably still getting some production. So small amounts of molecules may be passing through this chain. But if we then interfere later on down the line with another drug, then there's a good chance that all production of our, um, our folate has been disrupted. And then uh, daptomycin, poking little holes into uh, membranes, but a bacteria's cytoplasmic membrane and your cytoplasmic membrane are very, very similar. So if daptomycin is going to poke holes in it, it's going to poke holes in yours too. Okay, that is that for that section.